Not ARP. Not UDP. Print TCP. Ooh, OS dev. Hell yeah. How you doing, Hayden? Doing okay? I'm doing pretty good. We're trying to figure out this bug. It's it's rough. So I don't know. I don't know. This is like, this is one of those, we've been spending an hour and a half debugging it. And I just have no idea how we fix it. Not even close. What's the problem? We've got some like weird deadlock going on here. TCP. Nice. Okay, so we can confirm. We've seen TCP. We're just going to add more prints. Print Gaunt TCP connections. If that's the case, if we're getting stuck there, then someone has TCP connections locked. I'm glad that we got it to get stuck. So, discarding, not ARP, not UDP. We got a TCP. We try and get this locked. We'll try and do this, and then maybe the connection is locked. Now, the only way that can happen is if we have the connection, um, if we lock the connection, uh, lock, connect, connect, TCP, whoops, TCP connect. So we're in here, we have this lock on the TCP connections, and then, is there some way that we're failing? None of these things should loop. This should be instant. Allocate packet, send. I guess I've never really tested my non-TCP stack this hard. So like maybe it's something else in the stack. Ooh, nice, deadlock detected. I like that. I like that a lot because that means I probably hit the weird condition but on the same core. Sweet, that confirms it. So we should be able to hit, hit it single threaded then. Somehow, with the right network traffic, we can definitely hit this single threaded. Which means we can now try and hammer this. We might have to like blast some packets at this machine, but that's probably not too hard. Maybe it needs some UDP packets being blasted at it. But we had a deadlock. It's a deadlock detected at this line which means TCP connections can be held. TCP connections can be held when we discard a packet. Now I'm calling bullshit though. On a drop. TCP connections lock three, three places in the drop handler, which we can get rid of. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to add, we're going to add some debugging. Um, time threshold. We're just going to set this. And this will basically guarantee we always have this. So now we're always going to, if we hold a lock for way too long, we'll get a nice little print saying, what you doing? And now we shouldn't have issues on all the cores. So, I mean, we're going to have problems, but it's going to tell us what happened. Because um, it will break that lock. It will basically just hard panic once we get to a state where something's deadlocking. So, this should help us debug. 
And I should have done this right at the start. I forgot that I had this te technology. <laughs> Bam. Timed out when attempting to take lock. 382. So at 382. Here. I guess that's fair. And let me just up this. Where is it? In lock cell? We're just going to up... We're going to update this to, this is about 10 seconds. So after about 10 seconds, we're going to panic if we can't hold a lock. So we're going to attempt to get a lock for 10 seconds, which is a long ass time. Here we go. We didn't get the lock. This is going to tell us exactly what's going on. Bam. Timed out when attempting to take lock. OK, so now, oh, sweet. We have two different prints. 3D2 and 243. <laughs> Those are probably our lines. 3D2 in 382 here and 243 here. Okay, so it's an issue with this lock. Like 100%, that is the issue. So, why though? Um, okay, we have the lock. At this point, we have to be really careful. We created a TCP packet. We send. So one of these has just gotten stuck. Uh, print sent sin. Sending sin. Is it going to be really obvious when we get there? This is timeout, return none. Connect timeout. What did we set that to? Just a second. Sending, sent sin. Oh, we do a discard. <sighs> Fuck me. We do a discard here. And a discard here while we have that TCP connections. Well, that's the problem. God damn. How did I not see that? No, I think that's why I moved things up at one point. Okay, I'm going to do this. TCP connections insert port none. Is this going to be super fucking obvious when I find it? Yes, always. Core mem drop TCP connections. So this is going to uh, reserve the port. Then at the end, so we reserve the port, and then at the end, we get access to it again. And we fill that shit in. Right? Uh, so we lock that, and then we put this in as a sum. So we lock it for a very short amount of time. Um, and this is like reg is equal to ret.0.clone. Like, technically, that means we can... Well, that's just a ref count. That's not a big deal. Lock that. Nice. Okay, now that's going to be unhappy. And we're going to take TCP connections. And this will allow us to reserve a connection... Okay, and then this, con.lock, if let sum sum, nice, so now it should be impossible, because we, we take this lock, we take the connections lock, we then 
check if it contains this key. If it doesn't, then we reserve the port and we just say none in there. And then we drop that TCP connection or drop that lock. And then at this point, we can go on and do whatever we want. We can send all this stuff. And then at the end, we actually update the registration. Okay. Um, unwrap on a none, 98. That basically means the connection was like actively refused. Is it always doing that now? 98. Yeah, it's failing to connect. And that basically is going to happen. Set that to none. Um, okay, drop. When the connection goes out of scope, we'll drop it. That will lock the connection. We then lock the TCP connections. And then we remove it from the TCP connections. Um, I think that's an issue as well. This is a theoretical issue. So, right? If we lock the TCP connections, then we lock the device. It's possible that we obtain this lock. We got this lock happened in a drop. This then locks, well, this spins, and then this spins because it can't get that lock. So I think, <laughs> I think we have to do this. Um, uh, for a brief moment to get the port and the uh, device. And then we lock that port. Uh, okay, this is just ports. That technically works. So we lock this, in which case we never hold both locks at the same time. Yeah, the server simulator is used to like find the best server like price per dollar. Yeah, that's effectively why I, why I wrote that, and I use that. That's actually how I determine how I would build my next server that I just bought. Okay, lock the connection, clone the device out, get the port, drop the connection. I like this more. You could learn Rust before C, yeah, for sure. It's tough. I think I think learning C is probably best first, but I, it's, I mean, eventually people are just gonna be learning Rust first. So uh, get access to the TCP, yep. So we lock that, we clone the device, we get the connection port, we return those out, those are both copied out entirely. We no longer have the lock, it goes out of scope. We then remove the connection. We get the TCP connections lock. Then we remove that from there. Okay. So basically, anywhere that we do TCP connections.lock, 
Um, yep, we don't have the device actually locked. Or we don't have the TCP connection locked. This is, we get access to it very briefly. And here we can do, um, if, hmm, dot insert port none. If this is some, continue. So this is uh, attempt to reserve the port. Lock that insert, and if it is some, uh, and then this is someone already has the port filled in. If it's none, then we got exclusive access to it. So at this point, we've reserved the port very temporarily. Then just one of these goes away, I think. Okay. That's our port loop. All right. Pick a random port. Resolve the address of the server using ARP. Lock the port, or lock the TCP connections, and then insert none. And if that's sum, then it's already been filled in, so we just continue. Try another port. Someone already has the port reserved. Then we're going to, if not, then we're going to create a TCP connection. We're going to send a SYN, allocate a packet, send that shit off. We're going to compute the TSC value. That's our timeout. Then we're going to SYNAC. And then we're going to register the connection. So we wrap it in an arc lock cell. We then get TCP connections again, and we replace it. Assert that lock.insert port sum ret zero dot clone. Assert that this is exactly equal to sum none. So we make sure that we filled it in and it was previously present and it was previously reserved. Right? I love I love hard assertions like that. Um cannot do equals on that. Oh yeah yeah. Is How do I check that? Um and then? No, I can't and then. How do I check if it's some none? I guess I can just do this. Assert that this is equal to some true, right? So we lock that. That'll give us the old value. We make sure that it was equal to sum is none true. So there was a field there, and it was none. And then we return out ret. Uh, OK. And that's just we're getting rejected. We're just probably trying to connect too fast. Maybe Python's not very happy with us. Uh, print active connection reject. Maybe it's timing out because I have so many prints here. And net. Okay, those prints are gone. Begin bot, thank you so much for the raid. Whoop, whoop. How's your stream, man? Uh, 
So that's timing out. Connected. Two. Do I have a sleep? Do I have a sleep in anywhere? Um, that's panic, test fuzzer, kernel source main. Yeah, that's just for debugging. Intel NIC, that's for when we bring up the NIC. Thanks for always explaining so much of what you're doing. It's helpful. I'm so glad. I don't know. It just comes natural to me. To unwrap none. What's going on here? Maybe Linux is unhappy because I'm blasting. Because I'm blasting. No, we're just blocking and receive. Print. We'll just do this. Connection from... Oops. Connection from... Adder. Client.close. Ah. Um, we'll just do this. I'm lazy. Why am I rejecting those so hard? Um, timeout. Talking about the Rust Crate feed? Oh, yeah, of course. Future time. We got two connections. We got four connections that time. I feel like I'm actively getting turned down, but I have a print here. This is a timeout. Timeout. Really? up that a bit. Hopefully I can soft reboot in this state. I think I can. Yeah, I should be able to soft reboot here. Timeout. Why though? Why though? Why am I getting timeouts? We have that dropping stuff on, don't we? Yeah, I don't think I have those on. All right, do I have the problem single core? We've added so much debug testing stuff that we might have en ended up like breaking something. Yeah, sometimes we're just not getting a packet. Sweet. That we can debug. Um, let's see, what do I want to use? Um, let me see. What the fuck was I doing TCP dump at? Right here? Nope, wasn't there. 
Okay, uh, TCP port range 2000. Test.py, run the server here. Oh, that's. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Connected. Connected. Oh, now you work. <laughs> really? Really? All connected. Um, like I'm just not seeing the sins. at all. Like, I don't actually know if it's my fault or if it's, like, the Linux filter stuff that we were trying out. Linux has taken forever to respond to those sins. Look at this shit. Oh, we're, we are getting Synax. Grep S dot. Uh, S dot. Oh, those packets are getting... Mmm. I think the problem is... If... Yeah, the discard stuff... Yeah, another Nick is picking up. I'm consuming them. That's what's happening. And I'm not at a state yet. Um, I actually kind of want to have this lock for the entirety of this session. But I have to. I have to not do discard. Because if I discard a packet, I can discard a packet, and then the way that I discard it, well, I send a sin, I get a sin ack. Maybe I just need to handle sin acts here. Um, if tcp.flags and sin, uh, sin is not equal to zero, print discarded a sin, yo. That's gonna happen. That's what's happening. We're gonna discard a sin for everyone that failed. 
I think. Oh, they're not registered yet. And I can't do discard while I have that locked. Dude, that is some tough stuff. How do I want to architect this? Basically, I want to have... I want to register myself right away. Because I can discard that sin. I want to register it right away. Then it's in a weird state because it's not a stat. We just have to handle that. We got this. We got this, guys. Register this TCP connection. Here we go. We got this. Register the TCP connection. Then here, send this in. Um, let mute con is ret.lock. And then we don't need the none reserving thing. We'll get rid of that. But basically, we could potentially discard the ACK that we need. And so what we're going to do is... It's like, i got to think through like all these fucking things, man. It's tough. It's tough. Forty-three. Um. Four on nine. Insert. Yeah, we're just gonna insert it. Now we gotta do the same logic we had before, I think. Um. Yeah, we're going to make a connection. The port's going to be zero. Then we'll do, at this stage, con.port is port. Attempt to reserve the port. Move the connection into here. Right? I guess I'm just going to do ret arc new lock cell new ret that attempt to reserve the port here we'll do ret dot lock ret dot zero dot lock dot port and we try and slide it right in there. We attempt to put it in there. Oh, yeah, that's going to overwrite it. Okay, then. Oh, TCP connections is equal to cura TCP connections lock. If ref if TCP connections contains key ports Yeah, if it doesn't contain this port if it does contain it continue. TCP connections, insert, ports, rent.clone, which is this, I guess. So here, I'm going to create the TCP connection. We then insert this into here.clone. Uh, insert the TCP connection. Uh, if let uh, ret let ret is equal to this. Uh, 
And then at the end, it's just red. And then this will be a TCP connection red. So all these red.locks turn into red.0.locks. Uh, 239. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Okay, we're going to lock that. We're going to drop the TCP connections, and then we'll lock that. 388. Make that mute. So if it contains the port, continue. Get a new port. Otherwise, at this stage, we got a TCP connection. So this... We'll print, uh, oh, deadlock detected, If it's not equal to the connection port, then discard it. I don't see how that would deadlock. Let's take a look. We have a connection lock. If it's not our port, oh, we got to do this. Um, Okay. Yeah, discarded a sin. So, all the ones that don't connect, I think, will see discarded a sin. No, we're not seeing that. Why not? 432. We timed out trying to get the lock of the connection. Um, and that would happen if someone has our thing locked, and that would happen, we just created that, but we registered it. The only place where that can be accessed with, through being registered is in the discard. So someone discards, they have the lock, and for some reason discard is just taken forever. Discarded a sin. I'm just going to return in that case. If I don't return there, I extend... I send... Allocate a packet, I send. Oh, that server died. Whew. Holy shit. So why would that why would this take so long? TCP.payload. Payload is zero bytes. Was I panicking maybe? Maybe I was panicking. So I need to add a state field, I guess. If sin is zero, um, the server's kind of fucked. I don't know. Lindari, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Whoop, whoop. Hell yeah, thank you so much. How you doing?
Hope you're having a wonderful day, wonderful time, hanging out, waiting for the server to reboot, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be back in business. Um, so that Pixie server died on us. Okay, we're good. Discarded a sin. And yeah, so we're not getting those connections because we're not sending axe back. We're not sending sin axe back. Um, and I think that's because, what if I do this? Oh, is this getting stuck on send? Because I feel like this act should do it for us. Um. Discarded a sin. And then this gets stuck if I do this. And I'll print. Print. Uh. Whoa. Whoa. Prince got packets. Prince made TCP. Print sent packets. I guess, do I have the device locked? I don't think so. Discarded a sin. Uh, print. WinRem. Print extending for this. TCP.payload.len. I bet this is like a massive number, maybe. Extend. Print extend done. What? Is that a rust bug? No, extend done. Uh, remote act bad. Are right, good? Am I panicking here? But I have a lock held? Why would that lock matter? Why can't I panic in this state? But that's what's happening. I'm panicking here, and I don't know why I can't panic. Because the core, the BSP... But the BSP should be able to get an NMI when this core dies. That's 100% what it is. This is this assertion. But like this should work. All of them should connect. Um Okay, okay. We're gonna have a uh, waiting uh, connection established. Bool. Uh, tracks if the connection is established. Four oh nine. This connection established is false. Once we act the synac, say this. Is true. Connection is now established. All 
I mean, technically, I should have a retry if I get a packet drop on that. Maybe I should just drop that packet. Uh, if self.connection established is false, return. And then we should check sin, and there's like a bunch of stuff we should check. Um, if self.remote ack is equal to TCP ack turn, I really want this panic to work. Panic, die. I don't know why I can't panic here. Um. And then I just need to handle retransmits, I guess, on my connection. If we timed out, then we're going to rebind. And we made a TCP connection, so we'll go continue rebind. We got no SYNAC. Hmm. Is that really what I want to do? Panic. What if I just do this? I don't think these get stuck anymore. Maybe they do. No, they don't. that panic why can't I panic there why can't I panic there Um, currently we don't support sending while receiving. Well, I guess we can add that. What is that? What does that look like? Basically, when we send, what network card does it support? Just Intel network cards. If we're sending... And this is the logic here. Unact is this. The number of unacknowledged bytes. So if connection establishes false, then return. And it's only established when we send the act there. All packets should be act at this point. Extend the window, do that. Okay. Unact is this. Sequence minus the remote act. Self, TCP. Acknowledge bytes that weren't sent, perfect. Then, that allows us to then update the remote ACK at that stage. Remote ACK, remote sequence, and the window.
Um, make sure it fits in our window. If it fits in our window, update all this shit. And the window is this. One oh six. Yep, that's return. If the ack increase exceeds what we have not act, then we got a problem. I don't think we should ever really hit that state. There's all our connections. Uh, 230. That's eight new connections. 748. That's eight new connections. If the act increase exceeds that, otherwise update act sequence and window. Okay, so now we should be able to kind of go back to what we were doing earlier with all these tests. Had a bunch of different stuff open. Okay, so this is going to actually hit these this Python server and it's going to send data. It's going to wait. Um, one eight. Yeah, we opened two ports. What's going on here? Those connections are happening. Okay, if I do one receive at a time, we'll just do tcp.receive only. Oh, these don't do anything yet, do they? We commented out all this code. <sighs> Jesus. This is just on one core. We're gonna try and use two TCP streams at the same time. We got two connections. We got two things that sent data in. Um, all verified. Reset. Sent. All verified. Okay, so now let's try this on all cores. Okay, looks solid. Time out when attempting to take lock, 243. So that's during transmission, or during receiving. Get the device. Here we go, the connection. Um, what's my timeout? Let me make that a no preempt. So all these locks are. No preempt. Okay. 
see if that changes anything. It shouldn't. Four things. Bunch of data going by. Um, what window manager is this? This is uh, Debian here. Or er, this is uh, DWM. Sorry. Time out when trying to take lock. This tries to lock. We then loop doing receives while there are packets. We return back from receive, so we should be fine here. Fuck. This does a discard, but that's only if it's not for us. Okay, what if I do this? What if I tighten my lockage? Mm, I feel like that shouldn't matter. Am I panicking? That lock, these are fair locks. 243. And that's. I'm trying to lock this. And this is TCP desk port. sequence it's acting us at the same time we're sending data and we don't like that currently we don't handle acts that are also sending data so we're sending and then we got an act and that means that we have data that came inbound So that means it sent something, the server sent something, and we weren't necessarily expecting it. And this is something we do need to handle at some point. So maybe this is what we're hitting. We're hitting this panic. Oh, assertion failed. Okay. Six two one five eight. Did that connect? I feel like it's this assertion. I'm just gonna do this. If this it's not equal to this. I guess that's gonna get stuck now. Mm, 
Yeah, if one of these cards panics. Not starting to send. I don't think it's send side. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. That happens if the data is just bad. Oh my god. Let's undo that. Okay. And this gets stuck. One ninety two. time.sleep5, uh, 0 0.5. I, I just want to delay a little bit. I want to see if that fixes it, because I think it will. Nope. It'll fix that assertion, but... God damn it. I might have to just re-architect this whole thing. Send the packet. 244. Time dot one attempting to take lock. But it's like, it's guaranteed that it's fair. Like, it's impossible that that... The only way that can happen is if they these cores literally just disappear. If they just evaporate. It's the only way that that can deadlock. Or something really stupid that I did. <laughs> and this won't do anything. Here. Now we're just going to send. Receive, receive. Okay, if we receive just on one of the cores, or one on a on one of the TCP connections, does that fix it? All verified. Okay, one of them panicked. And then, why am I not able to panic? Why Why are they not panicking me? I think that's the issue. Something's panicking, and then we're not seeing. Oh, fuck. I don't it be. I turned that off for some reason. I don't heard panic. There we go. Really? Panic occurred on another core. Okay, so they're not panicking, but I, yeah, I can't believe I had that turned off. That's. Oh, what is it? This connection lock. Zero dot lock. That is temporary. This one I have for a relatively long time. But that's on send. We're not hitting send. 
unimplemented. We shouldn't hit send just at all. Okay, perfect. Receive. We get this lock. Print got lock on this com port. I think I literally just call it port. Got lock on 852. Oh, and I never, I never loop? Fuck. Hey, hey, to say I told you you're in for a ride. Damn, some impressive uh, live coding. Thank you so much. I mean, right now we're debugging our architecture. But, like, we have the TCP stuff working. We just don't have the... We just got some deadlocks because it's, it's really hard to actually safely handle these constructs where you have... Where you receive the packet that's destined for another port and you have to put it in another port. It's really fucking hard, man. It's really fucking hard. So this is a uh, print starting receive loop on this connection port do you even sleep not tonight um okay starting receive loop okay so we're getting close we're getting really fucking close wait do i not have a timeout Okay, so I'm getting a lot of packets. I mean, it's still kind of theoretically shouldn't be an issue. Basically, this one core is handling all the received traffic, I think, for all the cores. Nope, it gets stuck. Perfect. Okay, cool. That, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, eventually it will just drain the NIC. Like, this doesn't need a timeout because it's an asynchronous receive. If wasn't an ack. Is it this assertion? Good pack. Uh oh. Okay. For some reason, these panics are like. No, we got good pack. Then we got packets. And then those are trying to get... Okay, so I'm discarding. That's what's happening. So I go to discard. Discard. Right? This is the last thing I do is I discard on that port. Nope, we got a packet. Fuck me. Discard TCP. So this is discarding a packet that wasn't meant to go to us. Discard TCP that, and then that gets stuck. Um, oh, discard TCP to this. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's, we're getting close. And it's gonna be embarrassing when we get it. <laughs> oh, I don't care. Trying to lock this. That's a deadlock. That's just a deadlock then.
Trying to discard to this. Trying to lock. But that's me. I'm doing that. That's my core. And then I get stuck. Because someone else is trying to discard to me. We're trying to discard to each other. That's what's happening. 100% that's what's happening. One core is trying to discard a packet that was meant to go to me, and I'm trying to discard a packet meant to go to them, and then we're both trying to lock each other. All right. Core mem drop connection. And then uh, re retry. While let. So we're just draining all the packets. Why do I do a while let? I don't need to. I'm going to do an if let. Relax some of the pressure. Discard, continue now, goes there. Drop that. Drop that. Before we discard, we drop our own connection. I think we're fine now. You know, I did theorize that way back when in my head. Maybe even said it out loud. Okay, we get the connection. Whenever we discard, we drop our fucking connection. So anytime we do a discard, we drop our connection. We make sure that we don't have that connection active when you go to discard. Now, I don't know why we're getting the wrong data here. That's going to send quad words to us. We've changed so much stuff that there just is probably like a real bug at this point. But I think this means that we're getting... Yeah. Okay, so discard. Anywhere that we discard. Packet wasn't for us. This is in send. Well, we're not hitting send right now, but we do need to change that. Once again, send. At this stage, we're in receive. We drop the connection. We drop the connection. Okay. It means we acquire lock every packet, which sucks, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem, to be honest. Um... If the destination port is not equal to the connection port, discard the packet. And we don't have a lock. But we do. Um, we'll just drop that shit. We'll make sure that we never have that fucking connection when we discard a packet. That one is fine, it's kind of implied. But well, this should build, should be fine. Okay, then we're getting panics on all our cores, that's fine. We're just getting the wrong data. Print got this. Expected this. U64 from Ellie Bytes buff II. Got that expected one. Um. 
Really? Drop the connections. Lock that shit. Three E expected DB. That would happen when. So if I got rid of discard, this, if I just drop those packets, I should go to retransmit them. What's my timeout? I guess I'm relying on the server side. Oh, if I don't discard this, it's just never gonna... It, the odds that this works are so fucking low. Every once in a while, we'll get data through. So, I feel like I'm just discarding incorrectly now. Connection established is false. Assert. Remote act. Oh, I said if it's equal. Oh, wow, I fucked that up. Wow. Whoops. Whoops. In your TC stuff, do you cut packet contents? No, not at all. Okay. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? How? How? Sending 1024. Really? Really? Got exp U64 from Ellie Bytes buff II. Damn, I thought that was I thought that was the golden goose. Assert that that has not changed. Update the server state, remote sequence, remote window. And we send ACK. And we should copy those into our, if it's greater than that, we just drop it. Otherwise we extend the window with the payload of the TCP message. Is it on like the last one? Oh, poor Python, man. <laughs> poor Python. It's just getting smoked. What did we change? We changed nothing. Correct? Um, I mean, that's looking pretty solid. Sent. This poor Python, man. It's struggling. Okay, got 485, expected 476. Okay, that would happen basically if we accidentally act some shit out of order. 
You only have 64 gigs of RAM in your workstation? I know, I know, it's disappointing. I disappoint myself. Um, fuck. Why would that happen? Discard. Okay, so now we got to think about this. If it's not in a hack, we don't care. And technically, we should check reset. Like, there's a bunch of things we want to do here, but get the window remain. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, dude. We accept things out of order right now, and then just smash them into the fucking window in any order. Like, goofballs. We need this logic here. If it's equal, if this is the next packet we're expecting. If it's ac, we do that assertion and then we do this. And we drop we drop anything that's not in order. If the sequences are ac, I think that's it. Um extend the window. Okay. That's much better. And I should just do, if it's not equal to this, return. Um, drop packets that are not in order. Let's do this. If the ACK is zero, then we don't have ACK. If we do have ACK, then we can check if the sequence that was sent to us is not equal to our current act state, then we got a problem. Tab that in. I think that should be close. Um, if it's not, if we don't have an established connection, drop it. If if we don't have an ACK, then we drop it. Then we check. Is the sequence not what we're expecting? If it's not equal to our ACK, then it's not in order. All verified. Okay, I think we're good. Um, then we update the server state with the sequence and the window. We then get the remaining number of windows in our window length. Oh, we only want to do this here. Okay, if it's not in order, then we check that. At which point, we've made sure that this fits in our window. So if it fits in our window, then we can extend our window here. We can update our ACK with the remote sequence. We then ACK everything by sending our ACK, and then we send the packets. This is just always correct. Oh, shit. Got a page fault? Got a fucking page fault? Really? Really? Oh, I don't have that old binary, do I? Because I rebuilt it. Let's see. Nice. Reproduces. Okay. Um, I'm cool with that. <sighs> Target. Release. Uh, oops. Build. Kernel. Release. 
kernel.exe bin dash. That's good. 635. We're attempting to read a page that's not present. Holy shit. To use after free. We attempt to get a lock. Enable interrupts. This thing gets deleted out from under us. What the fuck? I mean, like, I understand what's happening. Some, some, well, I don't know why, but somehow this is, I think we're about to call TCP discard, right? We're about to call TCP discard. Um, what? Dude, what is going on here? RBX. Like, I... Discard that. We clone it. We clone it. It's insane. One six five eight E Alec It's like the net device is getting deleted. What? Dude, what is going on? Um... Uh -huh. 
Is this always happening towards the end? Like, I wonder if it's when I start freeing some of these net devices. No, it can happen pretty early. No one safe. One unsafe there. I feel like the... Dude, what the fuck? It's like Ark is somehow getting freed. I don't, I don't get it. Net devices, Ark net device. Unless there's like massive corruption. No, it's like something, something's getting freed and it shouldn't. Oh. I think, I think it's because I don't, I don't stop the Nick DMAs when I reboot and then it DMAs into different buffers. Okay, so this right here. 100%, that's what it is. Because I'm getting blasted by packets, and then when I soft reboot, and then I, like, allocate a page, and that page is still marked as DMA for the Nick, and the Nick just spanks it. Maybe. No, but by the time I reboot, I... No, it could be something that gets corrupted. Yeah, it's probably... Something probably gets corrupted during early boot, because something gets DMA'd over. And then that just causes something to be fucked. I think that's what it is. Because if we look at these crashes, they make no sense, right? One, two, six, three, five. I mean, this just happens to be like the most active thing that I'm working with on the heap. RBX is what I'm derefing. That would be my guess. The problem is the repro is pretty hard. So it's hard to say if I had fixed it. Okay, here we go. Here's a different one. 109F4. Yeah, this is just in TCP Connect. And it's just, yeah, some page is just unmapped. So I think on purge. Uh, print. Purge. Let's see what happens here. I think I might not be able to print during this stage. This might just boot loop. Purge. Okay, nice. So what I want to do is I want to reset the network card in this situation. Um, and this is... I have the net device, and then I can get the driver. Unsafe FN reset self. This is uh, 
forcibly reset the nick. This is to disable it before we soft reboot. Um, self s nick dot self dot g. Fuck yeah. And then net driver, this is a requirement of net driver now. Okay, and then this is now a requirement. Forcibly reset the nick. Uh, unsafe fn reset self. Fully. Say what, fully before the soft reboot. That calls reset, and then I should, on net driver, I should be able to do self.driver.reset. Alright, so now we have to see if we can repro it. But basically, yeah, there's a chance that we came online with DMA happening. We've never seen this bug before because we've never had so much network traffic. But this will write all Fs to the IMC. And then we do that again. All right. This is this is the protocol that is requested by Intel. So disable all interrupts, reset the NIC, wait for the NIC to wait for the reset to clear, and then write all Fs. Okay. And we're still getting it. Shit. So that's not what it is. What on earth is that? I didn't use elves because elves use the sysv ABI, which uses red zones, and red zones basically means you can't do interrupts without a custom toolchain. MSVC calling convention doesn't have that limitation, so I can just use it out of the box with the default uh, libraries. It's actually really nifty in that regard. Okay, so it wasn't that. I mean, it's good that we wrote that because it, it doesn't hurt to have it. Um, page is just not mapped. The fuck? And this is the, in TCP connect, we do a rust alloc, we allocate a thing, test racks racks, if it's zero, then fuck off, otherwise, like the thing we just allocated we allocated something and it's not it's not mapped. I mean that's a pretty quick fucking story right there. This is in TCP Connect. Is this a realic? Do I not handle realics correctly? No, there's no way. Somehow in my allocator.
somehow I'm not mapping shit in. Or I'm reusing the physical uh, virtual address. Test racks, it's non-zero, that's correct. Hello, <laughs> I'm staying cute, hell yeah, Cubit. Dude, I have no idea what's going on here. Dude, what is going on? Like somehow things are getting freed. Somehow something's getting freed or it never gets allocated. Opt alloc. Unwrap or null mute. Get a unique virtual address. Print mapped in at X. I have no idea how many allocations I do. This might be brutal. Unless I'm going oom and it's just a really weird way of me going oom. Oh, I bet I'm going oom. I think I'm probably going oom, and then... I'm probably unwinding that incorrectly. I don't know, I'm not allocating that much. Beautiful. Um, mapped in at EC5. Okay, sweet. Now we can say print dialic of this. This pointer. We can actually see if we're trying to free that shit. Should be insane. Beautiful. Nine four C nine four. What? Map. Shared page table source. What do I do? I map in page 4K as read write non executable non user using fizzmem call map init and we don't initialize. I save the original virtual address. Make sure that the virtual address is aligned to the page size request. If it's not return none, if we return none, that would fail. Do you have any IT certs? I do not. Seriously impressed with how fast you've done it? Thank you so much, Tolt. Yeah, I mean, we've been spending the past like five hours debugging really dumb mistakes 
But we got everything up and running pretty damn quick. Now we're trying to figure out why I'm doing absolutely insane things. Um, I think free everything failure. Let me see if I'm hitting that. That's the only thing that I think would make sense. No, we're mapping that in. And how is that not active? How's that not active? One, two, five, E five. We allocated stuff, we never free it. And then we can't we can't access it. That means like the page tables are getting wiped out. Map raw. Okay, we're not hitting free. All right, let's uh, panic free. That's getting stuck right away, we killed it. I feel like something is freeing something it shouldn't. But like that. Translate. If it's not, if it is present, page is not present, break out, update the dirty bits. Map raw. Like it zeros. Um, it's always like the most recent thing. Oh, that's a null deref. Oh, that's interrupt f. Never mind. Five five, and that just it just never m maps. Is something getting optimized out? We're just gonna make these volatile, it doesn't matter, but we're gonna make sure. Because it doesn't matter, we have to do the rights anyways. But Rush shouldn't be able to uh, optimize these out. More specifically, LLVM. But I don't think it's that. Because that, like, I feel like that would have failed a billion ways. Yeah, it's definitely not that. I mean, that would make no sense. Um...
The only thing I can think of is packets. Like I use packets really heavily and those are fizzcontigs. Mm, fizzcontig. All right, I'm going to I'm going to um I'm going to disable freeze of these. We're just n never going to free those objects. I think we have enough RAM. Nope, it's not that. Uh, okay, what if I... I just will disable freeze globally on the system. Is something overstepping its boundaries here? Because now it's not crashing. Is it reusing something that was previously DMA? No, because the fizz contig wouldn't. I mean, it doesn't look like it's failing anymore. Holy shit. Check out the layout. Come on, there we go. And then fizz can take. This is what we use. So if I don't have drop on fizz can take, then it shouldn't be possible for me to reuse a buffer that I use from DMA. Is it something else? Is it something stupid? Is it something stupid? It's it's like we allocate we, we map in a page and then we just never we never map it. Let's disable the use of free lists. will always directly allocate out of physical memory. Something's getting freed, I think. That shouldn't be. Okay, it's not. Wait. But I got rid of free lists. I'm not using free lists. How would that We shouldn't have any reuse of pages. Uh, no, we can if they're large. If they're large allocations. Um, okay. Disable realloc again. Or dealloc. We're going to see if we can get this to crash. Maybe we just got unlucky, but it didn't look like it was crashing when we don't have freeze. Um, it shouldn't be TLB flushes. I think somehow a page is getting repurposed. One of the page table pages is getting repurposed. And I have no idea how.
But we've never seen this fail. We've never seen this fail if we don't have freeze. But the pages would come off the page free list. A hundred percent. But yeah, this isn't failing like this. What would cause that? Somehow, like, something's getting freed that should not be. And then I'll be right back when we do this. Yeah, there it is. So we're trying to do a write. Page is not mapped. But I bet the page was mapped. Someone reused it. Alec Fizz. Alec Physical Memory. It's Fizz Contig. That goes to here. That goes in the free list, so Alec Fizz Layouts. It's gonna tell us what we're requesting. We're probably requesting a couple oh done like that. Maybe I can't print here yet. I feel like I should be able to. Let's see. Let's try it on this. Yeah, that was fine. Allocate physical, get the layout. It's like somehow we're giving that page back up. Dude, this is like not what I would expect to be debugging right now. go come on unwrap on a none servers not running okay starting soft reboot can take lock at 400 mm print lock What am I doing in soft reboot that needs MM? Maybe I can't print there. Time down on trying to take lock 400. Oh, it's literally the print, isn't it? If I panic while inside of the allocator, or if I soft reboot while printing, I guess. Well, let's try it. 
It might theoretically work. I do need these logs. Connections. Okay, this. Connections. Hmm, and I can't reset it when it's printing. That's the issue. If I reset it when it's printing, it's going to recursively try to get that lock. Probably pretty close to... Go on. That all, that's all the connections, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight... Yep, that's all 16 connections. All verified. It might be really hard to get this to work with that much spew. Let rent is equal to this. Print elk fizz. Ret. Ret. This will be a little bit quieter, still uh, massively loud. Nice. Allocate fizz here. Six C. Six C. Hmm. I don't know. That looks pretty unique. That's the page that backs it. T C three C. I like it fizz there. Yup. That's allocating the page that's gonna back it, but I don't really care about this page. I care about the page that backs the page table, which is likely when we allocate Shit. Um, six C. Do I add more to my panic? Do I do a translate? On a panic? That's risky. Really risky business, but I think we're fine in this case. So this is on a... Interrupt this. I'm gonna do a print. Print might be dangerous here, but fuck it. I don't care. Um, let PT is equal to core boot 
args. Boot args page table lock. Let pmem mute pmem is equal to one of these bad boys. Create PT to translate vert address CPU read CR2 lock um PT is PT as mute as ref unwrap expected two arguments for translates what dirty no that's translate in fizzmem oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I made the pmem Ugh, I just want this over man I can't believe I have a fucking like corruption thing There we go. Nice. And nice. Okay. So the address that faulted, this 342B, there is a page there. Yeah. There's a page there. And it's what we expected. It's the 1088. The PT is getting cleared out. Wait, no. How did we have an exception? This is the state... It's not new virtual addresses, so I shouldn't have to do a TLB shoot down. Is this when another core creates it? Is this? Is that the issue? I'm not doing TLB shoot downs. But in this case, this is a page that's getting mapped that was never mapped before. Like it's a unique virtual address. Yeah, the virtual address has never been used. And we're faulting on a core that can translate it. Page full error record is just that it's trying to write to it and it's not mapped, it's non present. Now, one of these bits, like the present bit, could be zero on here somehow. Like this page could be getting smashed. So let's take a look. I'm going to print the. Let trans is equal to this. Print. Trans. Then I'm going to print um, we'll do the uh, create 
mm read fizz u64 at the um pml4e map x it's like close not 100% Um, PML four E. Unwrap. Okay, PML four E. PDE. Uh, PDPE. PDE. PTE. This is going to show us the actual uh, bits containing this. But I shouldn't have to do a shoot down since these are only ever being mapped in. That's why I don't reuse virtual addresses right now. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's mapped. Pink sauce to go? Holy shit, I'd love to get pink sauce to go. Is that a is that a thing they offer now? Um If I can get some pink sauce, dude. Three course, twenty five bucks. Oh fuck yeah. Oh yeah, I'll probably be doing that this weekend then. Whatever fucking day it is. Um, okay, so, dude, I don't get it. Offset A, and it's mapped. It's mapped. It's mapped. I never used that virtual address before. Holy shit, I think I know what it is. If I free the memory, if I free the memory to the point that the tables get cleared, I then have to shoot down. So like if I free everything that is on this page, I bet this is a very aligned address. Not quite. Theoretically, Theoretically, that could use an old translation, I think. If it got freed out by another core. Um, Yeah, I'm pretty sure if this if this level of the table gets freed, if this gets remapped, let's look at uh, if seven B two was recently allocated. Here's seven B two. Four A seven. Four A seven. That's the page. 7b2 
Hmm. If I don't do freeze, I don't have this problem. 7b2. Because I can reuse those page table entries. And then when I change free, if I get rid of this free, uh, in page table, here, am I invul pigging at all in free? I write zero three at the end to invalidate all the mappings. Return okay or sum. All right, so free is gonna do nothing. So when we virtually free something, we'll just keep it mapped in. I think this happens if I free a table. If I free a page table. It's not when I allocate pages, it's when I free a page table. I don't think this will fail. So to verify that, I can go to where I free a table Go through the table listing. Unmap this entry because it's no longer used. We're going through the table in reverse order. When I freeze something, I have to do a TLB shoot down, but only if I'm reusing the address. Well, technically, I could access old memory here. OK, so if I just never unmap the memory, Um, if ii is greater than zero, then there's a table level above us. If there is, if in use is one, then we can decrement that down. But what I'm just going to do here is if false and so we'll free the page. But we won't free the tables. And this, I don't think, will fail. I think what's happening is we're freeing a page table. And then we're using the old table mapping. And that's the only thing that would make sense. And then we would have to do a TLB shoot down. So basically what's happening is we are, we're allocating memory. We're then using that memory on another core. We then free that memory to the point that the entire page table gets freed, not just the single entry, but the table that contains the entry. We don't do a TLB shoot down. That then causes the other cores to... That then, yeah, yeah, that's entirely what's happening. Um, we allocate something, another, we use it and another core uses it. So it's in that other core's TLBs. We then, <laughs> holy shit, dude, that's some next level stuff. Um, wow. We then free that table, since that table is free, the other, the TLB on the other core is stale. We don't tell it to flush its TLB. Um, we should flush our own TLBs though, so I don't know how that was happening on our own core. No, if another core remapped it, if another core 
allocated and freed a page that we're using. I mean, this clearly fixed it. We're still freeing the page. We free the page, but we don't free the... Um, uh, this is why I do uh, non-shared memory kernels. That's why that my last kernel was non-shared memory. I kind of like that kernel design more, honestly. But yeah, we're not seeing that problem anymore. And I think... Um... So when I unmap something... When I freeze something, I have to TLB shoot down. Wow, that's entirely what it is. So we should have, the bug should be back. I can get rid of all the prints, cause yeah, all this shit can go away. Well, we're hitting all the weird bugs today. I guess I've never really been thrashing and sharing so much memory between the cores. But this should this should crash. How am I gonna do those TLB shoot downs? Whenever I unmap something, I have to do a shoot down. There we go. Nice. Free. So it interrupts is reset back to its original file state. Page table, back to its original state. Anywhere that we do a free on the page table, well, that's just a fucking lie. But it's not a group. What? Um, wow. Very few spots. Oh, it has arguments. You're totally right. Thank you. <laughs> Page table dot free. Is there any way to avoid TLB shoot downs? And I don't think there is. Right? There's no faster way to do them now. I don't think. Yeah, they don't. Someone has a fucking patent. VMware research, okay. With page access tracking. So they basically track which pages need to be shot down. Which makes sense. 
you basically determine which ones have an access, and if they've never been accessed, then you don't have to shoot them down. Like I don't, I don't understand why this is a paper, but it's fair. Um, maybe they do some crazy shit. I don't know. Because I do an invul pig in the page table. If the currency are three is equal to this table and we freed something, we know that we have the lock, so we do this. At this point, I want to do a shoot down. All right, be right back. I'm going to hit the head. Okay, so how am I going to do a shoot down? Hmm. I feel like I have to use an NMI, don't I? I can't do a shoot down if I don't use an NMI. Right? And then how do I know that the NMI was due to a shoot down? I think, like, I can set a global that's, like, shoot down count, and I can just wait for that to be equal to the number of cores. Right? Self-invalidating TLB entries. This is some fancy stuff. Did they say eliminating? Avoiding. Okay.
Oh, they're still required on the X86. This is on some other uh, processors then. It's an IPI. Fuck. I don't know the best way to do this. Um... I'm kind of surprised that we're hitting this. Yeah, that's some pretty fucking tough stuff. I guess I just... At this stage... On PMEM, I call IPI. I'll, like... PMEM... TLB shoot down. Request a... TLB shoot down. And I think I have to use an NMI. Uh, fizz mem. We should have fizz mem. That won't exist. Perfect. Uh, fizz mem. Unsafe FN TLB shoot down. This is initiate. Uh, TLB shoot down on all cores. Uh, yeah, for now, we, we can do this. Like, in theory, we could expand this to be more flexible of, like, don't do it on all cores unless they're sharing the CR3. But in our kernel, they always are, so we're just going to do that. Uh, bootler source TLB shoot down. Um, this one's easy. FN TLB shoot down me itself. We don't have to do anything in the bootloader because we're never going to free stuff like that in the bootloader. We're never going to have multiple cores sharing memory in the bootloader. Okay, unsafe fn tlb shoot down, meet self. And in this case, I have to send an IPI to all but self, I guess, and wait for all of the cores to check in. Problem is, I already use NMIs to signal, like, for a cores to stop running. Well, TLB shoot down implies a lock. It implies a lock on the page table. So the page table is locked. Thus, I should be able to... I should be able to send an NMI. To all running cores. And then I can wait for those cores to come up. So, uh, kernel panic, or source panic. It's gonna destroy our virtual memory performance. Oh well. Um. an NMI on all cores. And how am I going to do this? Okay. Okay. 
only do this if we have a valid APEC. Go through all to max cores. Don't NMI ourselves, of course. We got the core state. If it's online, then we send it an NMI. Should be able to just send it one. It could technically be in a VM, so we might need to send multiple. Send NMI to it. We wait. So that's going to technically halt the other cores. We don't want to init the core. So go through all the cores. Don't NMI ourselves. If it's online, if that core is online, then we want to send an, an NMI. And then... I guess we just have to, like, fucking wait. Um... I guess I can accumulate the number of online cores. Assuming cores aren't dynamically turning on and off. Which they might be during this stage. Um... If we do allocations while we're bringing on other cores, which we do, which means all the cores won't necessarily be online. They could also be in the bootloader. They also might not be like initialized. I guess uh, when they're online, yeah, by the time they're online, the core is fully checked in. We're only gonna send these to online cores. Um, uh, so then I think I have to do static. Should shoot down atomic bool atomic bool new false. This is should the core do a shoot um cores should check this during an NMI to see if they are being shot down. This is just so fucking racy because like Uh, this is an Atomic U32, and we give it the core ID. Um, if it is equal to their core ID, they are being shot down. Fucking weird, man. Atomic U32. Should shoot down. We're going to make a pub for a minute, but we want to unpub that. Uh, use create ACPI self apic states. Uh, self use create apic apic state. Ah, it's Apex Day here, I think. I think ACPI manages that. Apic, can't find in scope. Apic. IPI. Let Apic is equal to Apic. Uh, core, apic, unwrap. Okay. 
Oh, this will just get us access to the APIC. Don't need to unwrap it. Lock. Ah, yeah. Let APIC is APIC as mute. Unwrap. Make this mute. So get access to the APIC. Then we're gonna blast the, uh, the other cores. If a core is online, and we're going to, oh my God, this is brutal, man. This is gonna be so slow. While this is, uh, load ordering sequentially consistent is not equal to not zero, should shoot down store how do other OSs do this it's equally trash effectively <laughs> um apic id ordering sequentially consistent but we have a lock on the shoot down we can't we can't do a shoot down on multiple cores it's impossible so we don't we have a lock on the page table to hit this point. Um, oh, Tomic U32. Uh, if it's equal to their APIC ID, not their core ID. Should shoot down. So we're gonna store the APIC ID. Um, then we send an NMI. And we. While that's not zero, I guess we're gonna blast one of these over. We're just gonna send a single NMI right now. So you store the APIC ID, we then send the IPI, the NMI, and then on the interrupt side of things, ARP UDP lock cell, test fuzzer, that, trying to free up a little bit of space. Um, SP, Share uh, kernel source interrupts. So if we have an NMI, we have an NMI handler up here. If it's an NMI, then we want to say if create mm should shoot down uh, if let some apic. This is definitely gonna happen, right? Yeah, APIC has been set up before we, yeah, yeah. APIC ID is equal to core APIC ID, I think. I think that exists, does. So if you have an APIC ID, if should shoot down, uh, compare, exchange, uh, p compare and swap. Compare and swap the should shoot down. I think we have MM in scope. We probably do. Compare and swap APIC ID. Replace it with a not zero. Ordering sequentially consistent. Then, panic. Uh, we'll just do uh, CPU write CR3, CPU read CR3, return. Uh, create. Um, check if this was a TLE shoot down. We did like context saving. Like we would want to fast path this more, but. Um, if this is equal to APIC ID, 
then it was our apic id then we're going to write the cr3 so that'll invalidate our tlbs and we'll return out so this might work let's try it in here first 317 deadlock we already have an apic lock Really? Really? Um, I guess we can do that on safe here. There we go. If we have an apic ID and then apic ID, we set that up, uh, kernel source core apic ID. Set apic ID. When do we store that? Kernel source apic. Um, I think I want to do that after I've set up the APIC. Otherwise, that can potentially panic. No, not unless an allocation occurs between those two. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Fuck. I just did that on hardware. That work? I was not supposed to run that on hardware, but I did. And... I have to make a non-virtual memory allocator at this point. I think this is sending. Yeah, Python's doing stuff. Okay, all verified. That means the TLB shootdown's actually working. Wow, we first first tried that. If the APIC ID is equal to that, but like this this NMI stuff isn't panicking, right? If I didn't have this check here, or if I said if this is equal to this number, right? That's not my APIC ID. This would then panic hard in this environment, right? I think this would panic. So it would shut down the other cores. Because they would halt. The other cores would halt in this state. And that's what they're doing. That's why you only see one bind. So in this case, it does seem to be working. So otherwise we wouldn't, we'd only get the, yeah. So if we have an APIC ID, then we check uh, if our APIC ID matches the one that should be being shot down. In which case, like technically I'm blocking on all of the cores. I wait for them to check in. I could blast them all and then have them all count up something. Um, but that's relatively difficult because I don't necessarily know how many cores are online and they might be being brought online as we're firing them off. But like that would be a much faster way because this is waiting for a round trip on every single core. Um, Honestly, probably not a huge issue because I reuse allocations pretty easily. Like, I'm, I'm pretty good about reusing allocations. So I don't think I allocate too much. We're, we're bottlenecking pretty much entirely on Python here, but this is working now. Um, kernel source UDP. Uh, net UDP. Print. Where do I print? Kernel source net... EDP, print, oh, bound. Oh, I print that here. Okay, so we're gonna send some shit. We're gonna send on two, we're gonna receive on two different ones. 
So this is pretty thrashy, and we'll go different orders on these. Why not? It doesn't matter at all. Then our... Oops. Well, I didn't want to do that. Oh, well. It'll take us a second to do this anyways. I guess we're just printing... We're receiving eight bytes, and then we're sending this... I don't know why I'm not getting these packets in the VM. It does work on hardware. Maybe I have to enable uh, offload or something. Um, test. What am I doing? I'm doing a send. No, I'm not doing Rust. That's why I was so confused what I was doing in Rust, because I wasn't. <laughs> and I don't want this manual either. Um, Intel. This. Offload. Do I have to enable offloading? I really only care about it from here. Is this for transmit? No, that's for receives. Segmentation offload, fail count. No, I don't think so. Not implemented. Um, this lock here, we want to do what we did in this state as well. If let some receive. Continue. And then here we can do a core mem drop connection. Uh, discard drop. Okay, now we have those for a very short amount of time. 205. Moved here. Yeah, fucking redo it. Do I need con in here? Is that going to deadlock? Um, I guess... Let's put this here. This will let me know. Move there, okay. Um, that will deadlock, so... Do I just put this in a fucking scope? Mutual access to the TCP connection. Compute the unacknowledged. While it are next, so we send all the packets. Connection there. Yeah, I think I want to just scope this. It's a little ugly, but uh, I do think it's actually what I want. Okay. Okay, now we get mutable access to this. At this point, we're not doing 
any receives, right? Correct. Get access to the lock. So this is going to, that's just gonna check for windowing. MSS. Probably isn't the most efficient TCP stack anymore. We wrote it relatively clean at the start and then we remote ACK. Um, yeah. So this is, eventually we need support for that. Really? Is that not a long enough delay? Really? Remote ACK is equal to, is that actually what I want? I'm surprised I'm getting that. The remote is acting something. Really? Okay, so... Acting all my shit. Synax. And then one of these acts changes its own act. It's probably just the very first one. It's a synac. Then Pushes. Okay, what else we got? I send a foop off and then it acts me and sends no data. When would this happen? We sent something, another Nick picked up that ACK. Yeah, we do need to handle this. How do you manage your setup? You do configure stock? It's just, yeah, it's just completely stock. Okay. If remote ACK is the TCP ACK. I guess at this point I don't have the lock, so I'm not updating these things. So I can just update the ACK. 
based on what I received. Which is... Where do I ever set remote ACK? It'd be in send. Oh, remote ACK is this. So I just need to do this check. Right. Get number of unacknowledged bytes. If the ACK increase, ACK minus the remote ACK. If it's greater than unact, which is our sequence minus the remote act, then we got a problem. And that's it. So basically, if it acknowledged some shit, First we check to make sure it didn't send us more than our window. Then we check to see if it updated ACK. If it didn't update ACK, then this would be zero. In which case, it would not be greater than unact, because unact, if it's zero, it wouldn't zero is not greater than zero. But if it did ACK things, it makes sure it it is inbounds. And then if it is, it updates the remote ACK as well, which then will affect um, that were not sent by us. Okay. If the sequence wrapping sub remote ACK, yep, number of unacknowledged bytes, get the number of bytes that this ACK would increase the ACK count by. If it's greater than on ACKed, then it's stuff we didn't send. Otherwise, we just update it, and that will cause... This stuff, which does use ACK, that's just gonna peel some stuff off the buffer. Then here we recompute everything based on those ACKs. We don't cache anything in locals. So yeah, this shouldn't break anything. Okay, 202. Now we have to do the same thing on the send side. It's just two more of these. So this is, on the receive side, it's the same thing. Um, if the sequence is rack. Okay, we don't support sending while that. Here we're going to check, get the number of unacknowledged bytes. Um, this is just continue. And then here we can just do remote ACK is equal to ACK. All right. Ooh, ACK. If the remote act, same logic again. If it's greater than unact, then we got problems. This is connection. It's one of our last assertions. We've got one more that I think we will hit. Yes, we do. 202. Currently, we don't handle acts that are also sending data. In this case, we act data that we sent, or the server act data that we sent. And what is the logic for that? Remote sequence. It's just windowing, right?
I say if the sequence is not equal to our ac, um, if the TCP sequence is not equal to connection.ac, continue, drop out of order packets. And in this case, we can say connection remote sequence is equal to the TCP sequence because it's equal to our connection ACK. All right, TCP sequence, remote sequence is that. And before we do that update, we make sure if it's not equal to that, continue. Come on. Oh, something's dead. Starting software boot. Reset that and then the locks. Uh, get status, get checkout, kernel source or shared lock cell source lib okay so that's rebooting um no asserts in there no asserts in here no unsafe in there asserts in here invalid string those aren't network packet related things. So yeah, if if it's not an ACK, if it is an ACK, it has to be an order. Perfect. Yeah, I think we're we're pretty strict right now on our like order expectancy. But yeah, it looks like we're sending all this data. Send eight, nice. And we got eight. And now we're just waiting for that traffic. It's just, it's just Python being slow. Oh, maybe Python's not being slow. Did these get stuck? Uh-oh, maybe I want my deadlock stuff. No, it's not stuck. Get rid of the sleep. Yeah, the Python's doing a decent amount, but it's not. No, now it's idle. You decide whether to support handle bidirectional connections. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what we just implemented. I think we made it too strict by requiring that ordering. Um, Self. We don't want to update anything on self. Um, 
Let's see. So is this a problem with the mix of the send and receives? Python is blasting us. Okay, well now it's working. Oh, there it goes. Oh, and let's turn off this VM. <laughs> Unless I just literally removed the print. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay, let's get rid of the sends then. See if that fixes us. Hmm. Okay, so we fuck something up then. Oh, Python's waiting for a receive on these. Okay. Um. All verified. It's only one of them. One of them made it. <laughs> Shit. Sending I I Do, do, do receive let's see if I can let's see if it works single receive it shouldn't be any different hi crash python <laughs> seg fault Okay, it's pegging it. All verified. All verified. That looks good. Okay, let's try it with a send. We'll use TCP1 for this. Well, it looks like it's working in this case. Looks like when we interleave them, we start having problems. There we go, that's all eight. Um. Oh, fuck, that wasn't what I wanted. And that's fucked. Uh, can't recover from a panic there. I'm kind of surprised. Deadlock detected MM433. Page table.
Huh. Hopefully this one works. It seems like we're fine with doing one. I mean, we're pounding we're pounding the TCP stack on four different four different cores. Maybe my window size is just too big for four. I mean, that's working. We're, we're sending messages and then we're getting everything back. But when I do, I mean, that's eight, eight threads. Just hammering the TCP send receive. All verified, that's everything, that's all eight. That's pretty good. And let's try this, let's interleave one of those. Looks like this is working too. We did sends on two different ports. Now, why would interleaving these cause problems? All verified, that's all eight. Okay, now this one for some reason sometimes doesn't work. Looks like it's working though. Maybe I just have never waited long enough for it. I don't know. Cause it's basically twice the amount of time and it's a pretty long amount of time to wait. All verified. And then it seems to get stuck. So one of them got all... Maybe it is my window? I don't know. Um, I might be dropping so many packets on the Nick, maybe. Because I only have 256 packets on the ring. And at 8 bytes, I'm guessing that's what's happening. I should technically set the window size to maybe the number of free entries on the NIC. Something like that. Because I think that's probably what's happening here. Cause I'm I'm probably just dropping Sony packets. Yeah, this is doing a shit ton of packets. And basically, I'm probably just filling up my whole ring buffer. There we go. All verified on two. Yeah, I think we're just dropping so many that Linux just eventually um, sends us resets. No, it's trying to... It's trying to act them over. Unless my window's going to zero. I don't think it is. Let's see. Uh, 
Here's all the data. And then eventually, Am I acting any of these? I mean, it's just sending me data, but it's sending me length zero. Is it, does it just want me to act back? When it sends me, when it doesn't send me any data, Right. Does it want me to act where I currently am? Is that the problem? So it's sending me an it's sending me an act, and I'm not responding to the act in any way. It's a length zero act. Asking for me to report my state. So I think I should be handling these packets. Um... Uh, if tcp.payload.len is zero, print got zero byte ack. I'm just going to see if that prints, and then we'll see if I'm filtering it out anywhere. Well, in this case, I would always send an ack. So it's not here. Yeah, if I got a packet... I would always respond. Are these not my active ports? Let's see, 54. Are these just super old? 57628. Okay, here we go. Let's try it again. God, is your by an act? Okay, just finned me. Is that all my ports? No, I don't see any of the ports that I was actually using in there. Six five. Those were just old. It's my Windows Zero. Hmm. 
All right, let's see. Let's see some of the last responses that I gave it. That's me. I've got I got window. You always have windows. That's the other way. Um, ooh, window zero. Um, hmm, try to receive on that. Try to receive on that. And I'm just doing receives. So I'm saying out axe. Am I just okay? Let's try it single threaded. Single core. Okay, sending all this shit. All verified. Yeah, I think it's just a, a way too much packet loss that I end up just dropping things. Because I only have 256 entries on the ring on the NIC. So I think that's what's happening. I think it's fine. I think it's actually packet lossing until Linux just gives up. So I don't know. I, I think I'm happy with this. All right. Let's see how quickly I can receive data now. TCP. Let mute buff is vec OU8. Six gigs. TCP receive mute buff. Unwrap. Uh, RX doll. So that's six gigs, and then, all right. So this. When that connects in, it just expects six gigs. Buff is this times a gig or a meg. And then we'll just do client send all buff. And let me add some prints here, because I have no idea what's happening. We're sending a meg at a time. Looks like it's working. That looks like that's running full speed, to be honest. Did he allocate a six gig long vec? Oh, hell yeah. Nine, 10, 11. Okay, uh, let's fill it with some data. Um, I'm okay with that print. Okay, Python. Then here we can do a 
rx all in this. Let it is CPU RDTSC, and then we'll just do a CPU or time elapsed since it. So this is going to print the time. 12.8f. Not that it really fucking matters. We'll do like 16.6f. All right. So here we go. This is a, a big transmit. But yeah, I think this is running at full speed. All right. If, if we look at uh, end load ENP 6S0, right, we're sending at 900 megs a second, megabits a second. <laughs> so it's receiving that. It's acking those and handling them just fine. It's like 100 megabytes a second, yeah. Which is, it, it, it's basically, it's basically saturated in gigabit. Just counting Mississippis in my head. We're almost there. There it is. RX doll in that. We got exactly what we expected and it stopped. And here we go. So we can do, uh, fuck, what am I supposed to be using? Speed crunch? Um, I can do this, um, six times six gigs divided by this, divided by 1024, 1024, this is megs a second. So that sustained over a hundred megs a second of data. It's pretty fucking good, especially since I don't communicate a packet size. <laughs> so that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> this is, there you go. It's a, it's a gigabit TCP stack in 13 hours. <laughs> that's multi-threaded. Handles multiple queues. All right, let's get some windowing options going. Because I'm not happy with these results. Um... Uh, how many hours? Are, how are, how many hours in? Thirteen hours, and we spent like five hours debugging a lot of shit. <laughs> a lot of shit. So what I'm probably gonna do is randomly fill this buffer with data. Um, and then I'm gonna send it. So I'm probably gonna send the like two gigs. Well, let's 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 talk. TCP options. We're going to take a look at option. So it sends me um, Does QMU have some ETH interfaces greater than 1 gig? I don't think so. I don't it's actually not working QMU and I'm not sure why right now. Like it's not connecting and I'm not really sure why. Like it's getting a DHP lease. It seems like the offload's maybe not working. But like if I reset this VM, I don't see any TCP packets. And I'm not sure why. I mean, I could set up a 10 gig test. I could try it. Well, first let's um, let's let's use the options field here. We're gonna fill in an option. Um, we're gonna set the MSS on a sin. Only be sent when sin is sent. So on a sin, when we send our sin. 
we're going to want to fill in MSS. Because right now, Python's going to be blasting us with small ass packets. Little, little mini packets, right? If we take a look at what we get here, Python's going to be sending um, 536 bytes. Wait. 536. 536 plus 24 is 560. I'm pretty sure that MSS then includes the header. Someone said it doesn't include the header, but I'm pretty sure it does. If, if Linux is sending me 536, because I send it... Uh, 560 is the default, right? Or is it 536? Oh, 536 is the default. My bad. Never mind. Totally right. Um, when we create a TCP packet, we're going to give it options. And we'll just give it a fucking buffer, man. We can, we can do whatever we want. We'll send an MSS to 4... And then the maximum segment size is 32 bits. That's fair. Um, so then we'll pass in options here. When we make our sin, 2, 4. And then maximum segment size, we just want to do hex of... Um, what is the largest size that I can do? 1460, 14, 1464, I think. And those options, that's... Yeah, we'll need to go one more size up on our header. More jumbo frames? Yeah, I mean, I shouldn't be bottlenecking. I don't think. I mean, we, we did... We did add a lot of slowdowns to our TCP stack when we, you know, we, we did some stuff to it. <laughs> and we, we definitely, um, I mean, the way that we added locks all, all over the place, um, we did it correct, right? We can always relax locks later. You, like, make locks strict and then relax them as you optimize. Don't fucking try and optimize in your first go before you have something that works conceptually and architecturally. It's just not, it's not worth the risk. So right now we're really low risk. So the fact that we're saturating gigabit with our, like, low risk first implementation is pretty fucking awesome. Um, so our TCP packet, we're sending 24 bytes. Um, so if we do... 15, 14, minus 14, minus 20, minus... Let's not do 24. Let's just say... What's the maximum size? 15 times 4? We'll just say 1420 is our MSS. So that's 58C. Um, 2, 4, 0, 0... Five eight C, right? Create TCP. Today I learned about speed crunch. Yeah, someone taught me about that. I forgot who told me that on stream, but that was today. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Cause it's like it's so real time. It's like actually fucking good, dude. And it's OS agnostic, so you can use this on Windows and Linux and whatever, and you have kind of the same environment on all, which is important to me because I do a lot of work on both Windows and both Linux. And so I really don't like any tools that are OS specific. But yeah, it, I mean, it's so fast. The responsiveness is just insane, right? And that is a requirement for things. Like, if it cannot update at 60 FPS... And it's something I interact with and, like, bang keys out on. I'm probably not going to be happy. So, okay. Now we have options. U8. Guess this is A ref. B outlives A. This is on packet. Yeah, the packet outlives the net address and the options. Options. 
These are uh, TCP options to add. And then we want to pad it out with zeros. So whenever we send something, um, what we're going to do is assert self options len mod for technically this, eh, mod for is zero. This is uh, options were not modulo for, for uh, TCP options were not module four. Okay. Anywhere that we do this, we now just pass in, if we don't have any options, we don't have any options, which is pretty much most invocations. That one we do have options, those aren't mod four, but I want that, I wanna double check that we hit the assertion. Beautiful. Server's running, get this going. TCP options were not module four, perfect. So then, here we can do, this is 20. Um, plus self options len. Right? Any place that we have 24, this is 20 plus self options len. Uh, let's size header size is 20 plus self options len divided by four asserts header size is less than 16 uh, options to large for TCP header. And then here we can do header size. Um, 20 plus that div four as U16 shifted in place. Self options len uh, 20, right? IP TCP. Okay, we got a couple more of these. I should validate these things ahead of time. Um, whoa. Yeah, we got these. Self TCP payload, that's U size, I think. 748. Okay. Um. When we create the TCP packet here. We'll say asserts options len mod four is zero and options len is less than. So what's the max size of a IP? It's 15 times four, 60 bytes minus 20, 40 bytes. Um, invalid options for TCP header. 
mod. So then before we even create the packet, before we make that TCP builder, we check that it's the options are mod four and the options length are less than 40, less than or equal to 40 bytes. If they're equal to 40 bytes, then it's 40 plus 20. That puts us at 60 bytes, which is fine. Okay, 606. Sin. So here's our sin, and we just gotta pad it with zeros. And this now should be valid, and if we do this, I'm just gonna have this exit, or it'll just accept it, but it won't make the thread, just so we can see what we negotiate. Um, 777. Oh yeah, TCP 14, 14 plus self.options len, copy from slice self.options. This is uh, copy in the options. Okay. 2020, we have no more 24s. Okay, so here we go. Connection from this, and what did we do? Ooh, bad option. Uh-oh. Um. Reserve 14, 20, 20, options, len, payload, minus size. TCP payload, options, len, plus buff, len, options, len. Yeah, unless I fuck up a length or something here. I don't think I do. Um, here's the options. Two o four five eight c. So this sends me two o four o five b four. Oh, is the four the total size? Ah, that includes that. Okay, that makes sense because I had no idea why it would fucking use a a thirty two bit segment. Yeah, totally is. Okay. Just one options field then. And let's see, let's see where it was. Here's my sin. Yep, I'm saying I wanna use an MSS of 1420, which allows me to take a full packet, I'm pretty sure. 1420 plus 60 plus 20. Yep, that's 1500. So this allows me to send I mean technically I could relax that even more I guess you're never really sending options on packets are you except for maybe the time one um all right let's try this let's see if this ups our bandwidth I don't think it will like in theory it might In theory, it might, but we'll see. Packet after that has an MSS. Yeah, that's the um, that's Linux's MSS. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just. I'm guessing the window size is just so small. But yeah, I negotiate that size. So Linux is probably sending me those packets now, right? If we take a look at what packets we're getting, 
Yes, Linux is sending us 1420 size packets now. So it's just a little bit more data, which is nice. But yeah, we're, we're hitting the... We're, we're probably basically bottlenecking on it. Would it be funny if Python's bottlenecking in terminal output? Let's try it. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's the same speed. Which side is the bottlenecking? I have no idea. I don't think it's me. I really don't. It's really not that much data. Um, okay. So what can I do here? Um, If I do, I don't know. I think I'm just happy with that. TLDR, I think I'm just fucking happy with that. <laughs> get commit am, get status, get add kernel source. Added a TCP stack. Should build. Everything should build. Ev all fine. And let's update Rust just in case something broke. What's the tool you use for displaying interface utilization? Uh, end load. It's really nice. Okay, uh, cargo run clean, cargo run. Sweet, still builds, still runs, bootloader still fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. 920 megabits per second. Easy. Just installed SpeedCrunch on macOS. Yeah, it's fucking awesome, man. I'm gonna probably forget to use it, but I'll try to. I'll try to remember to use it. Um. Let's see. What do I have on this network right now? Is Fileland up and running right now? It uh, looks like it is. Uh, IPA. We'll try it on this one dot six five. This might not be the best test to use Fileland, <laughs> but uh, what OS am I running? I'm just running Debian here. Yeah, this is the Unfi machine. Um, 
Okay, inload ENS802. <laughs> I already have one. <laughs> uh, okay, then where's that? Where's that Python script? I don't want to rewrite it. It was really complex. It's a lot of code here. Vim test a pi. Okay. Nice. Maybe I am bottlenecking on gigabit. I mean, fucking look at the axe, dude. <laughs> I don't know. This might not be super fair because it's on the fi. God, I don't have another machine with a 10 gig NIC. Fuck, maybe I am ball neck. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm slowing stuff down. Maybe I'm acting too much. I probably need to do sacks. Forty one megabits a second of axe. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> it's good. Um and I think I flush my axe. Definitely want to flush that. Okay, so on an ACK, if I don't flush it, I just want to see. So we're not going to flush those every single packet. Oh, just it just doesn't get going. Yeah. When do I want to flush axe? I guess I kind of always do, but it's it's just so expensive to bump that ring buffer. Oh my god, dude. Um These aren't on a 10 gig switch. I'll be right back.
All right. Let's see. Um, I guess I can just try it. There we go. Two gigabits. <laughs> it's not 10. I mean, we've got 90 megs of Axe. <laughs> That's a fuck ton. But yeah, we, we definitely can do gigabit. No problem. But yeah, that's everything. That's six gigs in 25 seconds. It's pretty good. And this is on the Phi. Like, I could be bottlenecking on the Phi, not being able to actually saturate the Nick. So, I don't know. It's hard to say. Anyways, I think I'm going to call it there. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Get diff. Yeah. Hope y'all had fun. Hell yeah, see you around.